from what's causing it to what it means for the world at large and more. Join me as we explore how the Great Barrier Reef had a massive bleaching event. The Great Barrier Reef is located off the coast of Australia and is one of the natural wonders of the world. It's a place that is protected because of its importance not just to the world, but to the animals and various other creatures that reside in said reefs. However, despite many levels of protection, the Great Barrier Reef came under attack very recently via a mass bleaching event. In fact, the reef has experienced its third mass coral bleaching event in five years, according to the scientists carrying out aerial surveys over hundreds of individual reefs. Now, for those of you who might be confused as to the wording, a bleaching event is not what happens when bleach is inserted into the waters of a populated area. Rather, it's an event where the water that the coral reefs are in reach a much hotter temperature than the reefs are used to. Because of this, they die out as they're not prepared for such temperatures. These events can be very detrimental, and the loss of the reefs can harm a lot of things depending on the severity of it all. Professor Terry Hughes told Guardian Australia, We know this is a mass bleaching event, and it's a severe one. It follows the worst outbreaks of mass bleaching on record, killing about half the shallow water corals on the world's biggest reef system in 2016 and 2017. Hughes, director of the ARC Center of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies at James Cook University and one of the world's leading authorities on bleaching in the Great Barrier Reef said, We know enough now that the bleaching is more severe than in 1998 and 2002. How it sits with 2016 and 2017, we are not sure yet. More surveys were done of the area, and the news that was brought out as a result was not that encouraging. Dr. Mark Eakin, coordinator of Coral Reef Watch at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, told Guardian Australia there was a risk that mass bleaching seen along the length of the Great Barrier Reef in 2020 could mark the start of another global-scale bleaching event. Tropical coral reefs tend to be at higher risk of bleaching during times when the Pacific Ocean is in a phase known as El Nino. The latest bleaching on the reef has hit during the cycle's neutral phase. The real concern is with this much bleaching without tropical forcing, Eakin said. This may be a sign we've now tipped over to near annual bleaching in many locations. It's quite concerning that we are getting this much heat stress across the Great Barrier Reef in an Enso El Nino Southern Oscillation neutral year. What we are seeing on the Great Barrier Reef and potentially elsewhere is really being driven just by anthropogenic climate change. If we get another El Nino, the odds are almost 100% that we will see another global bleaching event. Aerial surveys of the 1,020 individual reefs completed across the lengths of the 2,300-kilometer marine park confirmed the bleaching when it was first suspected. The fact that the bleaching events are going from somewhat random or in El Nino years to annual is a very bad thing. Because there is a chance that reefs can recover from bleaching events should the temperature of the waters go down. But if it stays consistent, they'll die before that happens. And with annual bleaching events possibly coming, that could indeed be the fate of many coral reefs around the world, not just the Great Barrier Reef. We noted the bleaching events in 2016 and 2017. Those ones affected the Great Barrier Reef in such a way that half the reefs died from the rise in water temperature. Eakin said that when severe bleaching causes mass mortality of corals, those events take a decade or more for recovery. We are seeing these events far too frequently. Before we dive even deeper into what is going on with the coral reefs and how to stop this from happening, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve for you, the viewer. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Instead of looking right now at why this is happening, Let's just get into what would happen if the coral reefs of the world suddenly bleached out in full, meaning that they all die from the various bleaching events that may start occurring annually, shall we? The death of the coral threatens the area's tourism industry, speaking solely to the Great Barrier Reef for now, which employs more than 700,000 people and brings in $5 billion annually. So imagine that, a whole tourism area wiped out because of this bleaching event and $5 billion a year gone just like that. And the people who dedicate their lives to maintaining the reefs, studying the reef, and more have to go and find themselves new jobs. Doesn't seem right or fair, does it? Plus, don't forget about the animals. 
Coral is the home to many creatures big and small, and technically, coral are alive. They don't look it, but they're animals, and because of that, should the Great Barrier Reef and many other reefs die, they'll essentially be wiping out a whole swath of creatures from the planet. And there's enough of that going on already via the forests and jungles that are being chopped down or the animals of the world being hunted to extinction. Now, the reefs could recover on their own, but it would take years, and that's still a lot of damage that would need to be recovered from what would still cause a lot of people and animals problems. So our best option is to straight up just stop this and future bleaching events from happening. But whether we can do that is still very much up for debate. As the planet gains heat from increased greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, about 90% of that extra heat is taken up by oceans. In January, a study of heat down to 2 kilometers in depth concluded that 2019 was the warmest year on record. That's really bad if you can't tell. Eakin said ocean heat content data showed the world's oceans were gaining heat. There's so much heat that has been absorbed in the upper ocean that all the coral reefs are much closer now to their bleaching threshold. As a result, it's very easy to tip them over. Data from nine days of aerial surveys over the Great Barrier Reef carried out in mid-March are being analyzed and compiled at the ARC Center of Excellence for Coral Reef Studies at James Cook University. Dr. Neil Canton, a senior coral biologist at the Australian Institute of Marine Science, said because of the warming of the oceans caused by climate change, we are already committed to more frequent and more severe bleaching in the next decade. The Paris Agreement hopes to solve this by having countries lessen their carbon emissions that contribute to the rising temperatures in the world. It's a crucial measure for the Great Barrier Reef, as scientists warn that climate change may stifle the reef's ability to repair itself. For as we noted, if the waters cool down, the reef has a chance to heal, but if not, then it won't. Canton said the Australian Institute of Marine Science would be carrying out monitoring of sites in the coming months to see which corals had survived this event and how 2020 had impacted recovery from previous bleaching. We need to understand the full extent of significant mortality, he said. There is a little hope, though, despite all the reef death that is going on. Many areas of the Great Barrier Reef are known to have experienced severe bleaching, likely killing many corals. But others, including tourist reefs near Cairns and Whit Sundays, only experienced mild bleaching. Most offshore reefs in the far north escape bleaching entirely. However, even mild bleaching can be detrimental to fixing everything. With mild bleaching, the animal survives but growth is slowed and they become more susceptible to disease, said Associate Professor Tracy Ainsworth at the University of New South Wales. She said mild bleaching can also impact the ability of the coral to spawn, which can slow recovery from impacts. We have known for 20 years that probably by about 2020, we would start to see annual bleaching. Eakin added, even if the corals don't die, bleached corals are injured and starving and they are more susceptible to disease. It will also reduce their reproductive output in a bleaching year and the year after. And as if that wasn't bad enough, a 2019 study found bleaching in 2016 and 2017 had caused the numbers of new baby corals produced in 2018 to crash by 89%. In short, if something serious isn't done soon, the corals of the world will be seriously affected in no time flat, which means that we need to talk about global warming. Yes, the topic that everyone loves to discuss, especially since it's a topic that very few people can agree on, and some people don't even agree that it exists, despite the fact that there is plenty of proof noting that it is. But there's no doubt in many people's minds that the atmosphere of the Earth is heating up because of carbon emissions put up there by humanity via buildings, cars, etc. While the process is slow, there is a raise in the temperature of the Earth. And when it comes to temperature, there is such a thing as a delicate balance. If things are too cold, they'll freeze, and when they're too warm, they'll potentially melt or boil. The oceans of the world are warming up and causing the coral reefs to die. And in the northern regions of the world, the polar ice caps are melting. It's slow, but it is getting more and more noticeable. With all of these factors, you'd think that people would try and band together to stop this. But the problem is that even while some people are banding together to fix the problem, it's not an easy problem to fix. First and foremost, this isn't just a region problem or even a hemisphere problem. It's a global problem. From the tip of Alaska to the bottom point of Africa, from Japan to New York City and everywhere in between, there are tons of items, people, vehicles, buildings, and more that are pouring more and more carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and a whole variety of fossil fuels into the air and thus into the atmosphere. 
While this would be okay to a certain extent, as the atmosphere is able to absorb a lot of things, and both people and animals emit things like carbon dioxide and monoxide naturally, there is a limit to what it can absorb. And when that limit is reached, the excess bounces back down to Earth. As noted, the waters of the oceans take what they can, causing the temperature of the oceans to rise, but it also raises the natural temperature of the Earth, and many studies have shown that in the last 100 years, there's been an exponential spike in the amount of harmful gases we're pushing into the air. If this is not stopped, our planet is going to be in serious trouble. But how do we stop such a global problem? The first step is to admit it's a problem, which many people struggle with. Then we need to take steps to make this less of a problem. It'll never not be a problem, there will always be a threat of overuse of substances that can cause harm to the world. It's just that we're using fuel sources that specifically harm the planet and we need to fix that. Steps are being taken by some. We are starting to grow our renewable energy resources via things like solar power and wind power. Solar and electric cars are being made more public and that is definitely helping as cars are one of the biggest polluters on the planet. But we can't stop there. Trains, motorcycles, which are even worse polluters, trust me, planes and more are all public enemy number one when it comes to toxic emissions. Again, things are being done to try and stop this, including magnetic trains and new potential models of planes, but we have to keep going. There's also some sciences that could be used to try and fix things, especially for the coral reefs. Imagine if we were able to quarantine an area of the ocean and implement ways to cool down the water in that area so that the coral could heal? Yeah, that would be a game changer, wouldn't it? And it might not be as sci-fi as you're likely thinking it is. Global warming is a threat to the world, and between the polar ice caps melting and raising the ocean levels and the bleaching events that are causing the coral reefs to die, there are plenty of instances around the world that this is real and that we need to do something about it. Just in regards to the coral reefs, if we lose them in even a small way, we're depriving the world of one of its true natural beauties and disrupting a major aquatic ecosystem to boot. These bleaching events will continue as long as the world keeps getting warmer and thus we need to take steps to make that happen, else it will be too late to save anything. Thanks for watching everyone! What did you think of this look at the bleaching events of the coral reef and what we need to do to prevent them? Do you think we can save the coral reef from destruction? Or do you feel that it's too little, too late? Let me know in the comments below, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.